Welcome to the Unstoppable Profit Podcast. Wherever you are today, if you're starting with nothing or are well on your way to the success you desire with the right people, processes, and promotions in place, you will be unstoppable. And now I'd like to introduce your host, Mike Stromso. Greetings, everybody. This is Mike Stromso coming to you live from the Living Agency Laboratory, and I'm here with the next episode of the Unstoppable Profit Podcast, and I have been trying to get Kim on the podcast for quite some time. I'm happy. I'm pumped. I'm excited to announce that finally I got Kim Angeli on the podcast. Kim, welcome. Thank you for having me, Mike. You're welcome. Thank you for all you've done for us, and, and I was telling you a little bit about what you have done for us uh, before we went on and the list goes on and on and neither of us have time in our very busy schedules to go on about that. But thank you for all you've done for us. And, uh, the, the sharing of gratitude and the grateful boxes and everything else that you've helped us launch out there in the world, just magnificent. So Kim, fantastic. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you. And Andrew, y'all are amazing. And all of your people you serve are awesome. Yes, so I- they are. Yes, they are. So just well. all of the people that we are privileged to serve, or as we say in the UPP circles, we get to serve. Right. Tell, them, tell them a little bit more about Kim Angeli. Who's Kim Angeli? Where'd you come from? Where are you at now? And what are you doing entrepreneurially, if you will? Well, for your audience, I used to be an agency owner. I grew up, I grew up in an insurance agency. My parents owned one. And so, um, you know, my parents worked out of the home for quite some time. So I've actually had that phone call in the middle of the night and my dad would say, please hang up for me and call the fire department. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I've had my uncle call my dad and say, your nephews run the car into the front porch. You know, can you help me out? So I not only navigated that lifestyle as a child, I decided to start my agency from scratch in 2001 after being let go from a dot-com bust from technology. And then um, I sold that in 2016 to pioneer gratitude into corporate America, into business owners mindset. So they choose grateful over grumpy, Mike. Fantastic. I love that. (laughs) We need to get that word out there because there's still a lot of grumpy people out there. There are, (laughs) as you know. Yeah. Yeah. So congratulations. I I didn't know the depth of your background. That is fantastic. And now you're also stepping in and trying to reach out and help more agents with a lot of their online strategies, which is fantastic. But before we dive into that, because I want to pick whatever you can or willing to let out of your brain with this today uh, on that subject, tell us a little bit more about your grateful efforts. Uh, One of the things that uh, really caught uh, our heart and soul, Andrea and myself, when we uh, originally met you was the grateful box. You still have that going on, right? Yeah, we do have the grateful box. We actually just made a choice to move that product to be um, put together in the U.S. We have a U.S. box maker. Awesome. And have an American flag on that bad boy. Good. And um, so that is to remind people. So when I speak to a group about an attitude of gratitude, the grateful box is just a gentle reminder that that is a habit we want to um, create in our life. Like, so my whole goal is that, you know, you don't hear me for a moment speaking and you say, oh, I'm going to write my little note of gratitude and then go out in traffic and be a jerk that you're actually walking and choosing gratitude as a lifestyle 365 days a year. Cause as you know, Mike, right now we're in gratitude season. It's November, right? Everybody's, oh, let's be grateful. It's top of mind, but I've been here you know, most of the, I mean, 365 days of the year, I'm choosing grateful living every day. And that is a different mindset. And that's my goal is to inspire grateful living. So, so I've borrowed uh, one of the late great Zig Ziglar's quotes and uh, I use it all the time. So now I have a new word to install in the front of that quote. And the quote was motivation is like bathing is recommended daily. And so, you know, I'm, I'm in the same thing daily, daily, daily. And so I'll say training is like bathing. It's recommended daily. Learning is like bathing. It's recommended daily. So now the newest insert is gratitude is like bathing. It's recommended daily. It's recommended daily. I love it. Yeah. Fantastic. So uh, it's amazing. Absolutely. And I have six different goal sheets that I get to look at at least five days a week. On that goal sheet, it prompts me to look at my gratitude calendar, which I got from you. 
So thank you for the gratitude calendar. And uh, like I was telling you before we went on, uh, on my heart and in my soul is Cousins Camp in our future. And you have a big play in that uh, coming up in the launch because we're going to teach gratitude uh, to the Cousins Beyond. So thank you for all that you've meant to all of us. Well, and thank you for inspiring grateful living at a young age. I mean, Mike, I didn't learn this or I... I didn't intentionally start practicing gratitude until I was 40 something. So imagine like our kids that learn it earlier. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Think of their journey is so different. Exactly. Exactly. You started a phenomenon. I'm a pioneer. I'm a disruptor. Yes, you are a pioneer. What a great segue, by the way. Fantastic. So what I really wanted to dig out of you today so that everybody that's either watching and or listening to this will learn about is one of your latest uh, entrepreneurial endeavors, which is making a difference. I know that we have gone through it. We have invested in learning more about it from you, and it's making a huge difference in the opportunities that we're gathering from a perspective standpoint in our living agency laboratory, which is also an insurance agency. It's an affectionate name. So uh, it involves an online platform called Nextdoor, right? Absolutely. So and it's not new. It's 12 years old. Okay. So so what is the Nextdoor app? So it is an app that you can download on your phone and it connects neighborhoods. So in my prior life of insurance, I only wrote insurance for homeowners associations, which is how okay. I uncovered this app in 2012 at a board meeting. If anybody's been involved with HOAs and bone on a board, God bless you. <laughs> There's That's different personalities on a board, you mean? Yeah, yeah. I, God bless your soul is all I can yeah. say. It, it is you're a volunteer or you've been voluntold to be on the board, right? So that was uh -huh. my ideal client. So I uncovered that app and that journey. And what it was doing is it was a way for people to communicate with each other in neighborhoods. And it connects neighborhoods in a close proximity to each other personally so you can have the personal app on your phone so then next door in 2014 i called him up because i always want to know how someone's going to monetize something so i just called him up in san francisco and i said could y'all get on a conference call and tell me how you're going to make this make money with this so in 2014 you could do that because they weren't big you know they were new right and he said well we're going to let business owners advertise and we're going to push advertising to the people on the platform. So they got all the neighborhoods and the people on the platform. And then they decided we would let business owners advertise. Well, in 2014, that was a quarter of a million dollars a month. Wow. Wow. I said, wow. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. So it's really a platform where remember the yellow pages, Mike, you remember the yellow pages? Where you yeah. Back, the back in the day. So, yeah. ooh, ooh. and you would say plumber, electrician, dentist, Right. Like, where do you find those people now locally? Now, I could ask Facebook, but I have 5,000 followers. I have people in 49 countries on my Facebook. They can't really tell me about a dentist in Charlotte. Right. But that platform allows me to go out there and ask my neighbors, or I can search for a local dent dentist close to me. So it's location based advertising. Uh huh. It's super powerful. Exactly. Super powerful. So that's where people are going to look for. Those types of services, plumbers, HVAC, tutors, um, you know, homeschool people chat on there. It's an amazing platform that's connecting the community. So that's how people use it personally then. They're connecting right. communities, but it, like you said, it's location-based. Location-based. So is it, they have some kind of background AI that's, you know, pushing all that? Are they connected to somebody else that... Uh, you know, brings you into that locale because of your location? Right. So Nextdoor is a private platform. They do not sell your data to anyone. So okay. it's completely opposite of Facebook and Instagram, where they're making money getting, what do you like, Mike? You know, you can speak into your phone and suddenly, you know, whatever you said is popping up as an ad on Facebook. So Nextdoor is not selling Mike's information to anyone else. They're pushing advertising to you. They're not reselling data to make their money. They're making those advertisers pay for the platform. That's where they get their money. So it's a trust. They verify every address. So if you create a personal account, they want to make sure Mike really lives where you live. Right. They're not fake Mike. 
And then if you have a business now, now this is new, you actually have to verify your business so you cannot create a fake account. You have to upload documents to show that you're not like, a, you know, gonna scam their people who have trusted them over the years. Like you have to verify that your business is a real thing. So it's like a super legit forum. Super legitimate, very trusted. It has a lot of credibility to it. Yeah, and that's a, that's a good thing. I mean, well, uh, I think you know. we're seeking that out, right? In this environment, is you know, we we've made some of these social media platforms a lot of money by yeah. sharing what we like. Yes, yes, we have. Yes, and so Nextdoor is committed to not feel spammy and not feel like that it's really about you. It's about the people using it and that you're actually connecting. Their leadership is all about connectivity and how are we serving the community? I'm a Rotarian. You know, it aligns with my character. Um, it's very, it's, it's awesome. It's an awesome platform. And I've been studying it since 2012 because I'm a technology nerd and I want to know how things work. And I found a gap in the marketplace where businesses didn't know they could put their businesses on here and reach their local consumer or people that needed them. Like we want to support local. Yeah. I mean, I'm all about supporting my local Ace Hardware over maybe a big box store, right? Ditto. Yeah. And I, and personally, I'm willing to pay a little bit more for it to support local. Amen. I, I mean, I was out with my, yeah. I mean, that's what we want to do is support local. Yeah, absolutely. I was out with my son over the weekend and we're going to grab a sandwich after we got done setting up the field of honor, which we were just talking about. And I said, where do you want to go? And he goes down here and it was local. And I said, I'm glad you introduced this shop, sandwich shop to me, because now I'm going to go here to right. support. Well, that's what I say, Mike. I say, okay, okay, Mike, we, we're living through history. You know, my grandkids, I will be able to say eventually, I don't have any at the time, I have 17 year old, is I will be able to say in the history books, I lived through a pandemic. And I believe that we've shifted our conscious awareness into focusing on local and who are we supporting and who is right. supporting us. And we collectively right. come together in that mindset during this time. I will say that's a positive thing that has happened. And what happened with Nextdoor, which is a, an amazing statistic, is 17 times the engagement during COVID. So people migrated from Facebook to get information like, Where's the plumber? Where's the hardware store? What restaurant is open? Instead of asking Facebook for that information, they migrated to Nextdoor during COVID. Yeah. So instead of 2.5 million recommendations given a day on Nextdoor, you can times that by 17, which is wow. almost 4 million recommendations a day given for businesses. That's amazing. It's great. Yeah. Time. And, Love you it. know, Small business is the economic heartbeat of our country. Yes. And, uh, you know, we, we need to continue to push that and help that however we can. Thank you for all you're doing to do that. We are grateful. My mission is to let them know it's available. And yeah. if it's not the platform for them, I have that authentic conversation. I'll say, Mr. Customer, you know, your people are on LinkedIn or you get your, you know, that is not a platform you need to spend energy on. And I have that conversation just like I would have had an insurance. If somebody had a great insurance program and I couldn't serve them any better and their brother-in-law wrote their insurance, I'd say, stay where you are. Yeah. You know, it's not about the commission for me. It was always about who can I serve in front of me and what's in your best interest. It wasn't about Kim. It was about them. Yeah. That's the way I do next door. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly the way we operate. And we're not for everybody. And we're going to yeah. push them to the place that's right for them. Right. Because right. the law of reciprocity is always in effect. Absolutely. So how does next door, you, you touched just a little bit about how business owners are required to submit documentation, et cetera, et cetera, to even access or get set up on the platform. But how does next door help business owners? So it gives them visibility into their local community. So I'll give you an example. Okay. Um, if they don't claim their page, uh, their next door business page, which is separate from the personal page, it's a total separate page, they are invisible. You can't see them. They're invisible. Okay. You don't have a page set up. Nobody can tag you, nothing. So my whole goal is to get businesses on there so they can be seen in their local community. That's the first step, right? It'd be like not having a website. 
but then wanting to sell, you know, insurance without a website because people are going and look, you all know this, you teach this. Yes. Before a customer calls me to see how much my services are, what if they want to do business with me, they've all gone online and looked at Kim Angeli online. Oh, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So if you're not there, they have nothing to look at. And so you're actually not allowing, you have raving fans out there. I actually had a plumber client. This is very fascinating. I had a plumber client who had a reputation on Nextdoor kind of organically, but he'd never claimed his page correctly. He had 59 recommendations he had never responded to. Wow. So he lost the opportunity to engage with 59 raving fans. Was Now, we, we did respond to them because I cor- corrected his page, cleaned it up and all that. But think of the opportunity lost by not even managing your reputation on a platform where people are talking about you, good or bad. Yeah, I just threw in $1,500 per, for each one of those times 59. That's $88,500 left on the table. Right, right. I helped a Mr. Appliance claim their page. He had four emails in his next door business page he had never seen because it was just sitting out there in law and he just wasn't looking at it. He wasn't managing it. And so that is an opportunity lost. And then during COVID, now you could never do this before. If you were talking to me in February of this year, which is why sometimes I think this podcast was delayed. <laughs> if you were talking to me in February of this year, I would have said, you can't promote yourself from next door. They'll, they don't allow it. During COVID, the leadership team somewhere at a conference table on a Zoom call decided, we are going to allow business owners 24 free ads a year from their business page to connect with their community locally for free. That single-handedly was a game changer for me because then I didn't say, I have to say, you're at the mercy of your raving fans to give you shout outs, right? That would be equivalent to your local radio station calling up and saying, Mike, would you like 24 free ads in the next Uh, 12 Okay. Oh, here. (laughs) No, I'm good. (laughs) What would you say to that? And, And I have people, I call up customers and I say, are you using your 24? No, 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 I need to use them. Okay, well, that's like leaving money on the table because here's the difference. I've been doing some testing with this because it's new and I have to test it out. I'm like Andrea. I like to make sure it works first before I go tell people it works. As marketers, we test. Yeah, we test and we, we, we see what doesn't work. So I've been testing this with a cleaning company of mine that does no other marketing but next door. And she does a very big residential cleaning business. And we have been doing the two free ads into the marketplace, 12,000 touches a month in a three mile radius. Wow. 12,000 touches a month within a three mile radius. Where is this coming from? Because suddenly she's being seen. So it's almost as like you're, you take that postcard you would have put in the mailbox Uh and you create it and you brand it. And you never print it and you post it out to 12,000 people a month time, you know, on, on digital. Boom. How much money did I just save you in marketing dollars with more impact? Because guess where it's showing up on the phone. You know, these things seem to be pretty popular. (laughs) Scrolling through at night and they're like, Oh, look, Oh my gosh, look. Oh, oh, look, I could call her to clean my house. Or I could, God, guess who else is advertising on next door? Geico, State Farm, Old Navy. Now, t- I just did this with a real estate client of mine. I had a coaching call with her just before this call. And I said, I went to the mountains with my husband two weekends ago. And I'm a marketer. I went to college for sales and marketing. I have a degree in sales and marketing. And I've worked for big brands like Sprint, Cisco Systems, Campbell soup sales. I have dressed up as the Campbell soup sales girl. God bless me (laughs) when I was really young. And I noticed on the way into the mountains of North Carolina, something, an epiphany billboards were fading by the wayside of the road. There were no billboards. They were, had not been updated. They're all faded. They're all falling off the sign. The only billboard that was actually updated recently was Chick-fil-A. 
which is, you know, they're going to use it to tell you where to turn to go eat, get Chick-fil-A, you know, chicken. What does that tell you? So instead of the billboard going up, they're like, ooh, we could go put that same billboard on next door. There's a shift in where they're using their digital advertising. Yep. And next door is 12 years old and they've got venture capital and whoever they were in competition with, I don't know who that is. We don't know where MySpace went away, Facebook won. It's my opinion that Nextdoor is here to stay. They're in 50 states and 11 countries and they have a leadership team now that is gonna take them, they will evolve. And so it is my goal to get as many businesses on there that need to connect locally with consumers that need businesses that are awesome and wow them show up. That's my goal. Thank you. Thank you for your passion behind this. And uh, I love it. So much fun. It's exciting. Absolutely. So I, I think their board uh, was in the same uh, learning forum as we were in the beginning of this adversity because we made a mutual decision, Andrea and I and our leadership teams to grow through this adversity, not just go through this adversity. There's a way, there's a better way. And uh, we just got to be action takers and marketers as marketers we test. Right. Right. So, it's out there helping business owners. And, you know, uh, in the words of Will Rogers, Will Rogers said, if you just sit there, you're going to get run over. And so if you're a business owner listening to this or watching to this, if you don't get in touch with Kim and find out more on how to get on this bandwagon, you're probably going to get left behind. Would you agree? Exactly. And at least make, at least be an educated business owner, right? Next door is not for everyone, mm. but at least you're consciously aware of a choice. Right. I'm migrating a lot of people from spending, I'm working with a client right now that's spending $8,800 in kind of spray and pray marketing, $8,800 a year. We will pretty much eliminate a lot of that and use the rest of it to really nurture the people recommending her. I know you teach this is, you know, you get a referral, you send a thank you note and a gift or whatever. So that is way more impactful than sending 2,000 postcards out to people we don't know. Well, you just gave me an idea. Thank you, for thank you, Kim. I knew it was worth getting on this call <laughs> or podcast, I should say. Right, right. Um, so, so that uh, testimonial, that review, uh, that thank you for the referral, et cetera, et cetera, that can also all go on next door. Yes, yes. Because and when your raving fans are... Re recommending you organically and it's like this snowball effect right that they can recommend you on next door and you're just getting tagged and you you see the post because it's next door sends it to you that someone's recommended you it is a snowball effect of word of mouth referrals i have one client who literally he's like 60 per, after working with you and instituting gratitude we kind of marry gratitude and next door together right we don't want to get a recommendation without reciprocation Right, we're going to reciprocate for the recommendation. Um, when he married those two things together, he's like, "I'm on th a three-month wait." They said they would wait because of the reviews on Nextdoor, and we're in the middle of COVID. Like, hello, <laughs> how is this happening? And so, it's a shift from where are the and where do you want to work? I actually tell tell someone, I'll say, "Okay, I worked with one of your um, students recently," and I said okay, where do you want to be the go-to insurance agent? What neighborhood? What? Like I can pick? Yes, there's a strategy for that. Where you can be the go-to insurance agent in the neighborhood that you want to drive to. Oh my gosh, what a concept. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the other thing is uh, to you know finish the thought on that. It's not what we say we've done for other people. It's what other people say we've already done for them right. and the social proof aspect. So it's social proof, it's not social media. I have that in my presentation. Exactly. It's social proof. It's me telling Mike that I have a favorite restaurant and Mike thinks, well, Kim's not crazy. I really like her. She might know what she's talking about and you go and it's an amazing experience. I have influence over your decisions and so do your neighbors. Like I, I say this in my presentation, I say, okay, my friend, my friend, neighbor, Barbara, who was, is my dog walker when I'm not home. Mm -hmm. If she says she loves a HVAC person or an insurance agent or a realtor, and I already have a relationship with Barbara, 
I just cut through all those touches to get, you know, I mean, that realtor, that person referring doesn't have to touch me eight to 12 times to convert this, like to get to this. Nice. The conversion is shorter. The follow-up is shorter. Like we all love follow-up, right? Yeah. The fortune's <laughs> in the follow-up. Yeah. The fortune's in the thank you note and the follow-up. Well, if you want to reach 100% of the marketplace, you got to use 100% of the ways. You get to use 100% of the ways. When okay. you're strategically focused, which is follow one course until success, add on every day. Love it. Focused. So Love it. you just inspired me to piggyback on to one of the questions that I wanted to ask you. So if I may. You may. Okay. So how is Nextdoor different than, say, Facebook or Instagram, but bigger than that? And what is the experience like? in the next door forum, forum versus Facebook and Instagram as an example. Well, Why is that experience maybe better for somebody who might be in that forum? Well, next door is really just your neighbor, right? So here's an example. Um, my father passed away two years ago and I forgetting I was a next door expert because in that mindset, you're in a different mindset. Mm -hmm. I asked my Facebook family, I needed someone to help me with a front door for my mother, but I was in a different town. I was three hours away from Charlotte. Right. And so it went to five, you know, all those people and they thought I was in Charlotte. If I'd done the same post asking for someone to help me with the front door, like a handyman from her next door account, it would only have gone to a three mile radius from her house. Ah. Uh. So when, so let's just take for an example, I did this yesterday. So I have my, have a client who's a plumber and he came and installed a full house filter on my house. So I could literally, I wouldn't, but I could drink water out of my toilet. Like my entire house water is filtered, right? Got it. I did a post from my personal page on Nextdoor. It went to 17,000 people in a three mile radius on how I love my filter from Matt. If I did that same post for my Facebook page, a recommendation shout out. Right. I have 5,000 followers on average, it might go to 10%, that's 500 people, spread out around 50 states, 49 countries, Australia, I mean, I have people from all over. It doesn't have the impact. It's the location-based advertising that makes it so powerful. That's what intrigues me so much about it is that yeah. Matt doesn't have to take a call from north of me three hours away. That recommendation only went to a three mile radius from my house to 17,000 people. Yeah, so I'm sure you're aware of what I'm gonna say next because most savvy insurance agencies and most savvy businesses period are keenly aware of who their ideal client is. Right. So what this is doing, it's setting people up with their ideal client right in their backyard. Right there. Virtually, if you right. will. And you can actually start seeing with the recommendations, the way we teach you send out to get a recommendation, who your raving fans are. Mm -hmm. And I'm a Tony Robbins student. When I sold the agency, I went and took business mastery, which is like drinking from a fire hose, but it's amazing content, <laughs> is create raving fans add massive value and fall in love with your customer, not your product. And what raving fans do is they show up on Nextdoor because they continuously, when they see that someone on Nextdoor needs an insurance agent, they stop their life and they refer you again. And then they refer you again. And then you can see who your raving fans are in the marketplace and you can love on them and nurture them and they'll do it again and they'll do it again. You know, the same people refer the same people all the time. Wow. If you didn't hear what Kim just said, I strongly recommend you pause this, go back and watch it again and start taking additional notes because Kim just keeps dropping gold nugget after gold nugget after gold nugget. Thank you, Kim. We are great. Oh, you're welcome. You're so, welcome. Great segue into the last question that I had for you today because I, I know your time is highly in demand. So how would a next door business page help an insurance agency? And we just kind of started to go down that path, but other thoughts. It is helping give you visibility 
outside of your, it's very, we're in a difficult, different environment right now where we used to be able to go out and shake hands and kiss babies and network. Right. 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 This gives you visibility. If you just really did the free ads and, and you promoted things of value into your community from your next door page as an insurance agent, like I taught Andrew, who's one of your customers, is that alone, you can be the best cupcake maker, but if nobody knows who you are, you're not going to sell cupcakes. That's right. what I tell people. And so we need to have people to know a local agent exists and we need to be able to give your raving fans an opportunity to say, hey, here's their next door page, connect with them and they can tag your business and say, here they are. You know, you're looking for insurance. Here's John Smith. He's an amazing, amazing insurance agent who's local. They're not, you know, some big brand. You have to call 1-800 number. I am on a mission that we will be in a dire situation when the agent, and I know because I am still a licensed insurance agent, not practicing, grew up with two insurance agents, my mother and father for years. When that relationship of independent insurance agent doesn't exist between the customer and the company, that is a sad day. Yeah. Well, and we I mean, need to know the independent agents have value and that is your messaging tool to make sure that we don't get lost in big advertising, that you're on their advertising just like a Geico. You're, you're a brand. You need to be out there too. Well, you, you know, the bottom line is we, we are proud to be a local independent insurance agent. That's what I say. There's the word out of my mouth. But bigger right. than that, we work for the customer first. We're not beholden to any one insurance company. I mean, case in point, you know, I just got done battling on a claim over nine months, denied twice in writing by the company. I wasn't buying it. I fought it and we won. 70K check just arrived. Awesome. But, you know, I mean, if, if they were one on one with the company, that would have never happened because yeah. of the fact that I'm not trying to tell my own horn here. What I'm trying to let people know is you got to have somebody who's willing to fight for you, who has the knowledge to fight for you and, and all of that, because, you know, there's just somebody at a desk pushing the button. Deny, deny, deny. But no, 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 no. Wait a minute here. You didn't you don't understand this facet, this facet, this facet, uh, the breakage of the pipe manifested and originated above the surface of the ground just because the damage ended up below it originated here i mean right and you become that advocate for that customer and that's what i used to tell them i'm like you know if i'm rep i'm representing you i'm on the same side of the table and the mr travelers or zurich or whoever you place your business with is on the other side of the table because i was given the gift and the licensure and the professionalism to read on page 40 in three point font where they're trying to take away from you, right? Nice. What the page one giveth, page 40 giveth away. I, I know. I've got another claim I get to battle next, and there's the policy because I'm going to battle it. I'm going to. Because I would read it. I would read it page for page. I would get my oh, I do. beverage or water, and I would sit down at night with my highlighter, and I would find where the company was on the hook. Yes. And so what's very interesting is that that people don't realize that we are licensed and we have to step into our greatness as insurance professionals. And I tell insurance agents that all the time. I'm like, you're licensed for a reason. You know, this is why you can't just go sell insurance without a license is because we have value. Yeah. And I've actually had, Mike, you'll think this is funny. I had one of my clients call me one time and he said, I'm at the DMV. And they said that you're not an insurance company choice on the little drop down. And I said, what? He said, I told him my insurance was with Kim Angeline. And they were like, she's not a choice because they don't really care who you place a business with. Right. They care that you care about them. Well, and the relationship is with you, not the company. Right. Not the company. Right. And that's why I was an independent agent because you know, I could have a client for life and I could put them with a bunch of companies, but my relationship was still to honor that person that had trusted me to write their insurance. Right. So, ah, the trust. Trust. Yes. Let's, let's uh, foundationalize and, and jump off of that because uh, we are uh, up at time. I, I know you have other obligations. And so uh, I want to ask you one last question, if I may. 
because I know you've already done business with people that we know uh, that are part of our UPP nation uh, and our agency, we do business with you as well. If somebody wants to know more about how you can help them with Nextdoor, what should they do? They can go to my digital business card um, that I created because of COVID. And when I speak, it's kimangeli.com. And you can actually schedule a call with me. You can reach out to me on every social media platform, including Nextdoor, and reach out to me and just basically that's where you can find me, kimangeli.com. And it has gratefulbox.com linked to it, which is, you know, my company as well. But kimangeli.com gets you to wherever I am. Yeah, in case you missed it, uh, and if you've ever heard me talk about Cousins Camp, the first thing that we're going to talk about as we begin Cousins Camp is gratitude. And we are using Kim's grateful calendar to foundationalize. So the cousins are going to learn to be grateful first, okay? Because when you exercise gratitude, nothing else matters. So thank you, Kim. And, thank and by the way, you so much. yeah, so Kim Angeli, um, K I M A N G E L I, correct? Correct. Angel with an I. Angel, Angel with an I. I love that. My married name. Good, good. So K I M A N G E L I dot com. Just go to Kim com and you can find out uh, whatever you want to find out about Kim. Uh, you can contact her. You can schedule an appointment to speak with her more about how she has identified Nextdoor as an incredible platform to build your business. So Kim, you rock. Thanks for having me, Mike. You're awesome. Well, thank you. And you're awesome too. So, uh, hey, everybody, uh, I hope this has helped you. Uh, that's what we like to bring and want to bring to the platform on the Unstoppable Profit Podcast, because our goal is to help you grow your business, create wealth, so you can have more freedom to live life on your own terms, all through the power of the three Ps, people, processes, and promotion. Once you get the excellent people on your team, install world-class processes and system through Kim and lots of other opportunities, you get to promote the heck out of it. So we're excited. We're pumped. By the way, if you haven't subscribed yet to the Unstoppable Profit Podcast, that's unstoppableprofitpodcast.com. Go there. Make sure you subscribe so the upcoming podcast will automatically get dropped into whatever platform you like to listen to podcasts on. We're on all of them. And more importantly than that, if you want to help somebody else, whether they're an insurance agency entrepreneur or any other business with the incredible wealth of information that you've learned today, uh, please make sure you share this podcast with anybody and everybody that you want to have them subscribe as well so that we can continue to help you grow your business, create wealth, to have more freedom to live life on your own terms. Kim Angeli, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. You rock. We're grateful for you. Uh, keep making a difference out there worldwide. Thank you, Mike. You're awesome. Grateful for you. All right. Thank you. Thank you for listening. If you would like to listen to more episodes or share this podcast with someone you care about, please visit www.unstoppableprofitpodcast.com. Now go out and make a difference. Be unstoppable and leave no regrets.